Hello and welcome to the fifth and final part of this little mini-series about converting a hand knitting pattern to a machine knitting pattern. Uh, this uh, doesn't actually add any um, extra steps that you have to do. I'm just answering a few what-if questions uh, just to tidy up any loose ends. So our first question is what if Having done all this, I decide I want to make the jumper in a different size. Obviously the knitting patterns come in five or six different sizes and every time there's a number, you've got a choice of five or six different numbers. Well, under those circumstances, I would go back to pattern conversion and can you see I've actually coloured in all of these cells and that's to remind me that I'd have to go back through my knitting pattern and find all these numbers and retype them in. So let's say it wasn't 106 stitches, it's actually 114 stitches. If I press enter, you can see that over here on our conversion, it's now changed to 139 stitches. Okay, now, having done all that, I would then have to do essentially section 5 again, transfer these numbers into the final pattern and redo my mini calculations. So that's how to redo it for a different size. What about if I want to redo it for a different yarn with different tension? Well, that's absolutely fine. Again, if I go here and change it to different numbers and then go back to my pattern, all my stitch numbers will have changed. Okay, look, it's 116.8 there. If I go back and change it back to 14.1, okay, and go back, it's now 136. Okay. So that's how if you're, you change it if you're using a different yarn. Um, if, you're, if you want to knit a pattern into this, so so far this is a plain jumper. Um, well, there's two answers to that. The simple answer is um, if you want to knit a pattern um, all over the whole jumper, well, that's fine. We just knit a tension swatch in the pattern and we change our numbers. And there's one other change that we have to make because um, if we go down to here where it says um, reset row counter back to 200, okay, we also have to put in an additional instruction, okay, which is reset uh, punch card. Let's assume you're using. A punch card or patterning device back to row 200. Okay, so um, what you need to do there, oh, I'm oh, sorry, back to row and then uh, and then we will put in uh, that there, we will copy that there and paste that there. Oops, not very well we won't. Copy and paste. That's interesting. Oh, uh -huh. um, sorry, that is that is also equal to K9. Okay, so, um, and then we'd have to do that to the front as well. I won't bother doing that now um, uh, because, uh, you know, you understand what I mean. Um, that means that at row 200 you have to be on the ball enough to notice that your punch card is on row 23 and then write that down. Um, if you're going back to continue a pattern that you will presumably be in the middle of in a shoulder, um, you need to go back to the row where you want to start again, put all the needles into normal working position, set the carriage to do slip stitch, without any yarn in it, um, and also cancelling end needle selectors. Well, it doesn't matter, you don't need to cancel end needle selectors. But anyway, um, set your carriage to do slip stitch, and then run it across once, and then um, that will set up that row just with the pattern on it, without doing any knitting. I'll make a demonstration of that another time. It is in all the instruction books, but just that can be a bit of a nightmare. Your alternative, of course, is to manually set the first row. That's also not a problem. Okay, final one. What if you want to do stitch pattern on the front and back, but not on the sleeves? 
or on the sleeves but not on the front and back. Well under those circumstances if we go back to here um, we're going to have two different tension swatches. Okay we're going to have one for plain knitting so I'll put plain knitting up here and then make that bold and I'm going to copy and paste this whole lot okay I'll paste it in here and this one is going to be pattern knitting and let's say that you're going to have um, a completely different tension swatch there okay and then we have to go back to our pattern conversion and this time in everything that we're using the pattern for instead of doing stitch conversion b7 we're going to make it that stitch conversion b7 we need to make it stitch conversion in this case b17 okay and again if we go back to the rows in every row instead of making it stitch conversion d7 it will be stitch conversion d17 and you do that for the whole of the thing that you're patterning let's say back and front or if you're just doing the sleeves you do that for the sleeves okay so i think that answers all of the what ifs we can now um do a conversion for a different yarn we can do a conversion for uh, uh, using a pattern we can do a conversion for using bits of a pattern and bits of plane and we can do a conversion for a different size and in all of these you have to copy this paste it over here into the final pattern and then re-go through our procedure for getting the final knitting pattern with practice bearing in mind that I've done this very slowly uh, and in a spreadsheet I'm not particularly familiar with so with practice you can um, you get used to your increases and decreases calculations and you can convert a pattern um, reasonably fast and you can certainly change from one size to another extremely fast. I hope that was helpful, I hope you enjoyed it and if you successfully managed to convert any patterns and knit them please do tell me in the comments, I always like to see when something has worked. Thank you very much and goodbye.